you can always use a little more screen real estate. This whole video, I'm going to be catching my streaming lights. You're just going to have to deal with the surface area being a little reflective. I'm getting to test drive the next pad. And I sent over a demo unit so I could take it for a spin and share some thoughts. And this is a really fun twist on the next dock concept. I've been a huge advocate for portable displays because there are so many gadgets in your home that are more fun to use with a bigger screen. Obviously, I focus a lot on smartphone and tablet desktop modes because your phone likely has enough compute power to displace needing another PC or laptop. But this also works for laptops, desktops, cameras, game consoles, anything that can put out a video signal over HDMI or USB-C is going to be compatible with the next pad. I spent a not insignificant amount of time with it wrapping up all the unlocks and Vampire Survivors on my Steam Deck. Utility, portability, and flexibility. It's hard to find a better class of accessories than portable displays for really maximizing your gadget bang for buck. They're fun to use, and you get more function out of the tech you already own. The next pad is a trip. Instead of trying to offer a laptop form factor for a phone's desktop mode, it's offering more of a tablet form factor. Got a 12 inch 1080p touchscreen with a rather sizable chin area for keeping your phone facing forward. USB-C with charging pass-through and mini HDMI for those gadgets that only have a regular video output. It comes with a full collection of cables to get you up and running fast, and it's got this really nice folding magnetic stand. This significantly contributes to the flexibility of the device being able to prop it up and angle it. I do have to point out though, I wish this flexible cover could work on the front as a guard for the screen. But the way all of the different magnets line up, I'm not sure how that would work. I mean, it sticks to the back exactly as it should, and it's incredibly sturdy. Your next pad is not going to slip off this stand. And a special shout out, because these are often usually floppy folio cases, this hinge is incredibly stiff, and I love that. I had this thing for two days before I even realized this could bend. Getting to the actual next pad, I was a bit surprised by the build. It's got a bit of heft to it. It's maybe a touch heavier than most of the other tablets I've used, but it's built sturdier than any other portable screen I've reviewed. When you pick it up, you don't feel any case flex or shifting. It is a solid unit. It feels machined out of a very high quality metal. Now for that weight, some folks out there might be disappointed that there's no battery inside. This display is powered by its host, or you can pack a power adapter or a power bank to run the screen and charge the host device. We're definitely making a compromise on weight, but getting this as nicely built as it is, I don't think I'd want it to be even heavier when holding it, because you also might want to slap a phone on it, which is what this whole chin area is for. I'm using the short cable, which is included and tucks away nicely in the back of the folding stand. You can use it with longer cables, but I like that we're minimizing the cable dangle. This might work a little better with newer Samsung phones like the S22 series, where Samsung is maybe trying to copy Apple's accessories like MagSafe, but I don't have one of those in-house to test with. I really appreciated that Nex is including these little metal adapters so that you can add them to the back of your phone or pop them inside your phone's case. And again, you can see this is a really sturdy magnetic adhesion. I'm using this right now with my Honor Magic 4. On its own, this phone will sort of lightly stick to the next dock, but it's not going to stay put. As I'm moving this around, this would have flopped off immediately. I'm just really tickled by how well this stand works because it, it like kind of fits my hand perfect. Like I could turn the next pad into like a little puppet. I could do a puppet show for you. Now I started with my Motorola Edge Plus and using Ready 4. I had to send that phone to a friend because they wanted to review it. So for the majority of my time using the next pad, I opted for the Honor Magic 4 Pro, which has a DeX grade desktop mode. This functions exactly how you would imagine. It's a full PC style layout with multiple windows and snapping and docking and full touchscreen support. I gotta say, this concept is pretty clever as one of the main complaints against laptop docks is, where do you put your phone? It's just gonna dangle off to the side. And here we get a grip, not only to better hold the screen, the phone is pointed directly at the user, which means we also have access to the selfie camera for things like video calls. And the next pad hinge is strong enough 
to invert the screen if you want your phone docked at the top instead of the bottom of this whole assembly. There are enough laptops out there with lower mounted webcams. We know what that up the nose shot kind of looks like. The 1080p IPS screen is a respectable performer. My unit had pretty good backlight uniformity for, for a portable display. Again, this is going to be a little different than a mounted home office desktop monitor. I was a little concerned about the brightness on first use. It seems dim, like maybe too dim to really use out and about. But there is a little OSD and we can also move this. Where's my game mode? If I turn on the game mode, you can see it gets a lot brighter, significantly boosting the brightness. I imagine this is a direct effort reigning in power. This whole screen can run off of a phone battery, so you don't want to nuke that phone battery, but I like having the option to drive this display brighter when I really need to. Now the colors are nice and punchy. They're vibrant out of the box. If you're an artist, you're definitely going to need to calibrate it for accurate colors, but watching movies, playing games, or if you're just using it for office and document work, you're going to be in great shape with no fuss. It's just so darn flexible. I get kind of tired of techies who complain about the prices on portable displays, right? The next pad is set to retail for $249. It's in pre-order now, and they expect to ship in August. There's going to be someone in my comments who proudly patting themselves on the back proudly proclaims, but you could buy a underpowered Chromebook for that price. And they're not wrong. But why would you do that? If all you can see is screen to use Samsung DeX on, but I have one program on a real laptop that I need, then you suffer a woeful lack of imagination. As mentioned earlier, I had this hooked up to my Steam Deck for a good chunk of time. I wonder if there are any other portable gaming consoles out there that can also do video output. It's a mystery. But this is not hypothetical. I wonder if you have other gadgets in your home that could use something like this too, because it's also built with laptops in mind. There's a groove and a bar in the stand to mount the next pad taller. So you can go side by side with a laptop or you can go vertical. I'm currently wrapping up a review on the Surface Laptop Go 2 and it's nice having a slightly larger 12 inch display to go with the 12 inch screen on this laptop. It's such a fun idea. It's really nice packing only this as a dual display travel solution. And if you're good to carry a battery, you could use this as a field monitor or a review monitor for a camera. You can't tell me there aren't some photographers out there who wouldn't be interested in a smaller, durably built, but flexible, field display. And I think that's about where we should start wrapping this video up. It's the first look. The next pad gives off a great first impression. This is a little funky, but it's clearly built with consideration and purpose. The only concern I have is traveling with some kind of pouch or sleeve or cover to protect the display just because of its unconventional shape. Other than that, it absolutely nails the use cases for several types of interactions for phones, tablets, laptops, computers, cameras, and game consoles, and does so in one of the best built packages I've ever seen for portability. It needs a really pithy catchphrase like, use it on the stand or use it in the hand. Sorry, I, that's so corny, I couldn't help it. In general, portable screens are a class of accessory I wish more techies would show off. They're some of the most useful things we can add to gadgets we already own. And the next pad is a really fun take on that idea. So I will, of course, leave some links down below where you can find more information on the next pad where you might be able to shop one of these puppies online. At the time this video was shot, they were in pre-order. Hopefully they will meet that August deadline to get these out into people's hands because I think a lot of folks are really gonna like this. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel. All of the support lately has been absolutely fantastic. Those of you who are catching the links in my video descriptions, if you're shopping some merch, if you're heading to my website, somegadgetguy.com, or or if you're joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically the coolest collection of tech pals in the universe. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at somegadgetguy on the Twitters and the Twitch, not so much on the Facebooks and the Instagrams, and I will catch you all on the next review.